Hey guys, what's up? This is Brett and welcome to this week's episode of Friday on the Turntable. I got my friend Robert here with me and today we're going to be ranking the entire catalog, studio album catalog of the band The Church. Uh, for those of you guys that are familiar with my videos, my Saturday Night uh, Music Club series, you will recognize Robert here. Uh, we both live in the Phoenix area and Robert, coincidentally, is the author of the Steve Kilby and the Church uh, biography called No Certainty Attached, which came out in 2009. So he's a bit of a bit of an expert on the band The Church. Yeah, well, so the thing about experts uh, with The Church, um, you probably agree with this, is that every church fan that I've met is an expert. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they don't seem to be fair weather fans. Right, right. So I'm basically a church fan that majored in creative writing and wrote a book yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a link down in the uh, in the description box uh, for you guys to grab um, Robert's book I actually read this back when it came out in 2009 before I actually met Robert so it's coincidentally that now we're friends and uh, here filming a video ranking uh, the church's catalog so a link down below where you can keep up on uh, Robert's future uh, writing projects as well so we're gonna start off we chose 15 albums so there will probably be a little potential issue with people deciding on how which 15 we chose because the band acknowledges I think 23 releases something like yeah. that. yeah but we chose to go with 15 and we did include um, the 1984 EP collection remote luxury so what we're gonna do is we're gonna each hold up we're gonna start at number 15 and we're each gonna mention our three favorite songs which I'm gonna have a playlist for those ones below but uh, let's just stop talking and let's get down to it. So we're gonna start here with our both of our number 15 choice. We're gonna hold it up at the same time. Okay. All right, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and we don't know each other's picks ahead of time, so right. it's a complete surprise. I went with 2003's Forget Yourself. And uh, Robert? Uh, this is Sometime Anywhere, which, uh, 94, does that sound 94. right? 94. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that's your number 15th pick. Why is this one in the bottom? And I know it's difficult, as I was going through this list today, it's difficult to put any album in the bottom spot. So yeah. why is this number 15? Well, you know, the thing about the church is that uh, uh, there's great stuff on every album. Sure. So um, although this is my 15th pick, I, I do enjoy putting this on and listening to it. I think. Um, uh, the reason that I, I have this at the bottom is, is, to me, it's the most scattered of their albums. Um, there are some real high points, and I think if um, the album had been pared down somewhat, it would have been one of their very best. And this is the first one without Peter Coppice, right? Correct. So, um, this is Steve and Marty, uh, and this was also the debut on record of Tim Poles, who's now their, their current drummer, uh, who was initially brought into kind of supplement the recordings that they've done. Um, but if you have the bonus disc, actually Peter is on that because it's uh, there's a track from, I don't know if it's from Starfish or Gold After and Fix Era called Drought that got included. As the bonus, the yeah, bonus disc. Yeah. Three favorite songs on Sometime Anyway. <clears throat> I would say um, uh, Authority, um, Dead Man's Dream, and um, I'll, I'll, controversial choice, I'll say businesswoman. Okay, yeah. interesting. I'm gonna, we're each gonna end up getting to our three favorite tracks when that album comes up for each of us. Yeah. So uh, I chose Forget Yourself from 2003, which this also has a, an addition with a bonus disc as well. Mm -hmm. um, I put this at the bottom because not that I think it's a bad album by any means, but I just feel like for me it's one that I don't really fully I'm not, I don't feel like I'm under the album's skin. You know what I mean by that? Like, I feel like it's still unexplored territory for me, if that makes sense. So I, th I put my three favorite choices as Maya, June, and Sea Lion. And, and there's other uh, really nice tracks in this one as well, but that's my number 15. All right, number 14. Surprise okay. is over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you go ahead and start this order up. Um, okay, so, yeah, I mean, I think what you said about the album is, is uh, pretty much how goes my feelings about it. The thing about Forget Yourself, um, I heard these songs in Australia because I was actually out there working on No Certainty Attached uh, as they were finishing this album. And so they did some shows, they did like a secret gig um, in a tiny little club and then they did uh, a couple performances at the Sydney Opera House. Um, and so I heard these songs. and. Uh, they were amazing live, and so I was like, this is going to be the best church album ever. But the, uh, 
at that point they'd been playing them a while and so they were a lot tighter and what you hear on the album was like basically as they wrote the songs they recorded them so it was a letdown because it was a lot sloppier than than what i had been hearing live yeah. uh, and i think that affects my um, uh, opinion of it somewhat. interesting uh three favorites on this one um so just again off the top of my head um uh sea lion um the first song i'm not a huge fan of how it was recorded but it's just a fantastic song um june mm -hmm. and an another one that wasn't recorded particularly well but great song telepath so yeah, Telepath, I had a, I almost put that on my list. Mm -hmm. We had two of the same, two out of the three same picks on that one. Um, so I went with 1996's Magician Among Spirits, Among the Spirits, sorry. Um, why this is number 14 for me, it, it feels, maybe to use your word, a bit scattered. Uh, mm -hmm. It feels like some of the songs maybe are a little bit too, too expansive and too, a little bit too meandering. I still enjoy it. I think it, it kicks off uh, really interesting. Kind of a dark record, mm -hmm. a very ominous sounding, but I picked uh, three tracks from this one. Come Down, which I think is actually a really great church song, um, a Lady Boy, and um, an After Image. And what did I write on that one? A s I said it reminds me of a soap opera theme. I don't know why I wrote that. Hmm. Do you get but that? Maybe like Young and the Restless. Yeah, yeah, like Young and the Yeah, that, that part. Right, right, right. That's why I wrote that down, because of that part. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that was number 14, Magician Among Spirits, and you had Forget Yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Are you ready for number 13? We are, I'm ready. All right, we're good? Yeah. All right, so number 13, here okay. we go. All right, interesting. So number 13 for me was uh, Robert's number 15. This is Sometime Anywhere. I'm not going to get any more into it other than uh, what we just, Robert discussed earlier, the first album without Peter Coppice on the album proper. Uh, I'm going to just go my three favorite tracks and my absolute favorite track on this album, which I was surprised wasn't on your list, is My Little Problem. Which, oh, yeah. Which I think is one of the, you know, we can throw these kind of things out there anywhere and, you know, where it falls on a particular day can be different, but I think it's one of the my top 15, top 20 church songs, My Little Problem. I think mm -hmm. it's just, lyrically, it's so just open and uh, the line about floating over your house. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's just great. Businesswoman, I also put. Yeah. Bar the title and the fact that the subject is a businesswoman, <laughs> but the song, I think the melody and the song itself, I think is is super catchy and it, it's good. But I don't know something about the businesswoman part. I want to say something yeah. about businesswoman yeah, real quick. Okay, so so from the moment this album came out, the Marty and Steve were just slagging that song. They were just saying it wasn't even supposed to be on the album, <laughs> and so many fans kind of picked up that drum beat, you know. And, and I kind of felt, you know, I, w I was saying that for a while, and then at some point I sat down and I, I was just hearing it with different ears, and I thought, this song is fantastic. And it's, yeah, it's silly, but it's also clever, and it, it would be something that, like, if Andy Partridge had written it, I, I think he would be proud of, you know? Yeah. Um, Great melody. Yeah, I mean, it's maybe, maybe f more humorous than you normally hear in a church album. Yeah. Well. So that might be part of the issue, I guess. Lullaby is number three for me. On that one. Yeah, that's a great song. All right, so number thirteen for you, Robert. Yeah, so um, uninvited like the clouds. It's uh, I, I guess my feeling about this is probably similar to what you said about forget yourself. I just haven't ever really been able to to live in this album like some of the others. And it's a perfectly good album. I mean, there's some really uh, wonderful songs on here. Just for some reason, I. I'm uninvited. <laughs> I just haven't been able to crack it, and I've tried numerous times. But do um, you got three favorites on that? Yeah. One? So um, uh, unified field, a uh, great pop song. Um, easy and block. Nice. Yes. Nice. Good. Good choices. Mm -hmm. All right. So that was number thirteen. All right. On to number twelve. You have your twelfth uh, one there. I do. Okay. Ready? Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Okay, so uh, why don't you start this one up, Robert? Number twelve. Okay, okay. Uh, so, Gold Afternoon Fix, um, kind of a, a maligned album, and, and once again, I think uh, when people diss this, they might be picking up on the band's dissatisfaction with the album. Um, I personally rate it somewhat lower on my list. You know, we're still kind of in the bottom half because. Um, it came after Starfish, and, and Starfish I loved, and, and I had super high expectations for this. I was thinking, you know, now they're going to 
they're going to do their their dark side of the moon or whatever. Right. And this came out, and it, it wasn't that. Um, and so, um, so I I don't love it, but um, it does have some great songs. Uh, one of the other issues with this album is um, that they're not live drums on it. I mean, sort of quasi like they recorded Richard Pluke and created loops out of his playing, mm -hmm. um, and I think that. Um, Takes away some of the lost some a little looseness. bit of the feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three favorites. Yeah. So, um, uh, laughing, Monday morning, and Pharaoh. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Laughing's a, a great track. All right. Uh, number twelve. I went with uninvited, like the clouds, uh, which was Robert's uh, number thirteen pick, and I assume that Steve did the uh, artwork for uninvited, like the clouds, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. um, Two thousand and six. Um, unlike Robert, I think I kind of really gravitate toward this album. I like the sound of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Unified Field and Easy both shared as two picks, and I love the song Untoward, especially the keyboard section in there. Um, but there's also Overview, also Good Days. I think there's a lot. I think it's an album that uh, maybe if it doesn't reveal itself immediate, I think it's definitely some of these later church albums maybe aren't so immediately gratifying as some of the things we grew up with like um, like Starfish or Heyday or something but I think they're albums that um, unveil themselves with, with repeated listens since they didn't have the big radio singles like uh, like they did back then mm -hmm. so that's my number 12 number 11 okay you ready yes here we go okay all right so we got uh, Remote luxury over there, and every after everything, now this. So it's interesting to see as we pull these out because if they haven't been talked about yet, I already know that this is coming up in Robert's list, and that's coming up in mine. So it's always interesting to see the, yeah. the comparison here. After everything, now this, 2002. I think this is a really interesting album, and uh, the songwriting on, I think on this one is is actually really stellar i think it's very you know some albums they just you really identify them with the artwork too there's just something about that beach scene there that just i think the mm -hmm. album itself really sounds like that um numbers great track uh the title track after everything and invisible is uh incredible piece and i even put a fourth track for awful ache which i think is mm -hmm. also great so mm -hmm. that's my number 11. yeah remote luxury um a, a really great album and, and um, uh, Brett mentioned this earlier that um, it's some would consider it not technically an album because it's based it was actually two EPs that were put together uh, Persia, the, right? Persia, Persia and Remote Luxury, and Remote Luxury yeah. uh, the American release and, and I, UK too I think I'm not sure about that but anyway in here in the US we've considered an album since it first came out. Yeah. And, uh, and, and if I remember correctly, this was done as a stopgap between Seance and Hey Day right, as right. An Amer their American label signing to put something out. Yeah, I honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> I, it's, it's in my book. I yeah, it. Come on, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> um, so three tracks, uh, Constant and Opal, uh, amazing. Um, no Explanation, I think, is one of my favorite church songs of all time. It's um, just a perfect pop song. I'm going to have to agree with you. I don't that. think they've ever played it live, and it is really? fantastic. Love um, it. And then Marty's song, uh, 10,000 Miles. Great, great, great track. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Uh, I'm enjoying hearing the, all, these, uh, all these choices. OK, so that takes us to number uh, number 10. Okay. All right, here we go, number 10. All right. All right, so we got Hologram of Ball and Ma Magician Among the Spirits. I'll let yes. you uh, you start. So Magician, um, this is a very interesting one f for me because I've got sort of a um, split between my head and my heart on it. My heart loves this album. I have loved this since it came out. Um, my head acknowledges that, my head acknowledges everything that you said. Uh, the songs are kind of, maybe too long, um, unfocused, but my heart absolutely loves the atmosphere from start to finish of this. And also, I'm a huge prog rock fan, and this is probably the progiest absolutely. that they've gotten. So so I, I do enjoy putting this one on uh, and just soaking up. Yeah, and just to reiterate that the church, I'm going to say this from my perspective, the church have not made a bad album. 
and I reckon you probably would say the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So any of these that are down at the bottom of the list from 15 to where we're at now, number 10, we're not, there's no disrespect to any of these albums because they're all good in their own regard. Yeah. Um, but uh, three songs in that one. Uh, well, After Image, certainly, um, and Come Down for the mm -hmm. reason that yeah. you mentioned. Uh, I'm also going to include Ritz, the uh, Steve Harley cover, which was actually was when they reissued this, it was left off, I think, for royalty reasons or something, but uh, a, a great atmospheric, dramatic cover of that song, hmm. um, which which I love. Yeah, and, and I should also mention we did not include the Box of Birds covers album for this mm -hmm. uh, for this uh, video today. Okay, so my choice for number ten was 1998's Hologram of Ball. Um, this was the return of Peter Coppus, uh, the gu um, guitar player, the other guitar player in the church. Um, the title, or uh, the title of Robert's book, No Certainty Attached, is actually the, uh, one of the songs on the album. Um, I went with, I'll tell you, you know, I revisited all these albums multiple times since Robert and I discussed doing this video, I think back in May, uh, but we finally got around to doing it, so I've revisited this in terms of how am I going to piece this all together since then. And uh, I revisited this album again today, and there's just sometimes an album, it hits you on a certain day, mm -hmm. a certain time of the year, and right now we're in a hot Arizona summer, and for some reason when I listen to this today, this jumped a lot higher in my list mm -hmm. than I had originally put it. Mm -hmm. um, so, Anesthesia, Louisiana, and the track Another Earth, all fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that's number 10. All right, I think we're number nine. Number here we nine. go. Interesting. All right. <laughs> so I went with uh, 1990s Gold Afternoon Fix, and for me, is my favorite church song. And it's so hard how you judge an album and where you put it by the strength of that one song, which happens to be your favorite one, which is Metropolis. When I hear that song, it's just something about it when that opening, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and then just that really deep resonant vocal part. Of Steve's that comes in and it just like I don't know it just almost just like takes away my strength or something mm -hmm. about it there's just something about that song I, I just think it's the absolute best church song um, laughing is also my set um, another favorite which actually is only uh, it's on the CD and the cassette right. but not on the vinyl edition but since my first exposure to the album was on either cassette or CD I'm going by that track listing uh, third one is the closing track grind that was Gold Afternoon Fix. All right, number nine, Robert. <clears throat> of Skins and Heart, this is the debut album by the church. It's a great rock record. It's very different sound from anything else in the catalog. Uh, much more up-tempo album, less psychedelic, uh, or less overtly psychedelic, mm -hmm. although the lyrics are quite uh, surrealistic. Um, and this had a different drummer, actually. Um, Nick Ward was the was the drummer on this. Um, they had kind of a fractious relationship with with him. So he, he sang a lot of the harmonies too. He did. That, yeah. That's another uh, uh, a difference on this because he has a very um, high sort of tenor, very clear mm -hmm. harmony voice, which I think worked really well with Steve's much lower uh, voice. And I miss that on the later albums. Uh, um, I think Tim Poles has done a good job with, with backing vocals in, in recent Yeah, on, on the unguarded moment, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you can really hear his right. our unguarded moments here. <clears throat> so, um, in terms of three songs here, um, the unguarded moment, obviously, classic, yeah. fantastic Absolutely. song, and hits you immediately. Um, I'm going to have to do four because... Okay. Uh, uh, Chrome Injury, I just absolutely love that. The riff, uh, the... the that song, musically, from start to finish, I think is just a rock masterpiece. I don't know what the hell it's about, but uh, it's, a, it's a great song, song, and I wish they would play it live uh, more often. I think the last time was probably like Germany in 86 or something. Um, uh, Bel Air is just an amazing yes. song that, that, to me, echoes Eleanor Rigby in some respects. And then also, um, uh, it's not on this release, but um, on a lot of the American releases they had, um, I guess, some material from an EP that was added. Uh, one of those songs is Tear It All Away, right, which is, song. I think, one of the best church songs ever. And the reason I'm including that in uh, with this album is when they did that tour a couple years ago 
where they did a song from each album. Mm -hmm. uh, that was their song from this album. So if they acknowledge that as being from the album, then I will. That's the one. It's just called the church with the broken mm -hmm. statue on the cover. This was really hard to find. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the U.S., this yes. version. So that's mm -hmm. the one that I always, and I have two copies of that on vinyl. Okay. <laughs> so that that's the one I know with Tear It All Away as well. But Tear, but yeah. for all set, all purposes, we're acknowledging this one as the debut Tear, official album. Right. Yeah. It, Tear It All Away, I think, sums up the lyrical thrust of, of pretty much all of Steve's work. Um, you know, people say to see is to believe, but then they just believe in that they can perceive what they see is not the total total view you know, filtered between the me and you or something like that. But the whole idea of digging under the surface and, and finding other realities or, or a deeper reality, I think, is, is what they've been about for the whole time. Nice, nice. All right, so let's go on to number eight. All right, here we go. Number eight. Okay, interesting. There's a, uh, what a pretty long, lengthy difference in time here, 1983 to 2009. Yeah. So uh, I'm always fascinated, that's another thing, you know, speaking of, of Skins and Heart, which came out in 1981 to their most recent, which is now five years old, 2009, how much has the band changed, would you say, since of, between these, oh, sorry, between those two albums there? Between these two or of Skins and Heart? Either one, either one. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> sorry. I think one of the, well they've changed a lot, and I think one of the biggest changes has been Steve Kilby's vocals. Um, it's just a much, it's, his voice is a much richer, Absolutely. more evocative instrument now. Um, I, when I, you know, I discovered the church through Starfish, right. and his voice was amazing at that point, and just one of the best voices I'd heard, you know, in, in rock. I really loved it. Very Sinatra-esque, you know. And I was kind of shocked when I heard the earlier albums because he hadn't hit that yet. Right. So obviously by the time you get to Untitled number 23, it's, it's even better. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, why don't you start with uh, what you got there, Seance. Okay, so Seance, I think Seance is an incredible record. Um, there are some production issues that I think have um, made it a, a tough listen for some people mm -hmm. and, and for the band as well. Um, there was a, a drum effect that is, is basically the Phil Collins in the air tonight gated reverb sound, but deployed throughout the entire album. The machine um, gun snare right, drum sound. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, and honestly, I, I think it works quite well on, on the more up-tempo songs like Electric Lash. Electric Lash mm -hmm. is really... Uh... But there's a lot of very uh, gentle, quieter stuff, particularly on side B, and it just is, is very jarring. Um, but by this point, you know, we've lived with this album for decades, yeah. so you, you get used to it. Um, lyrically, uh, I, I think Steve would disagree with this, but I think lyrically it's one of his best albums. Um, and, um, and, and, and I'm, I'm letting the lyrics kind of dictate my three choices. So, um, uh, Now I Wonder Why, I think is a masterpiece lyrically. <clears throat> and musically it has really grown on me over the years. Um, one day, right. amazing song, right. and uh, and then Electric Lash is maybe not a great song lyrically, but just a, a wonderful it's a killer. It's, I love it. Yeah, yeah. wonderful pop song. And, you can, and, and this hasn't even come up in the stack for me, so you already know that <laughs> I dig uh, Seance. So for me, number eight is the is the most recent one, Untitled Number Twenty Three. Mm -hmm. um, I got this copy from when I saw them in Annapolis, Maryland, in two thousand nine. So you can see it's signed by Steve and, and Marty. Uh, I think this is a, a is a excellent excellent album, and I'm really excited to see what's gonna what's gonna come from the church. Uh, they're working on a new album, mm -hmm. so we'll see what comes. Uh, but I just think the production of this album, the artwork, everything about it is is great. The songs are a bit long, but they work in that length. Mm -hmm. um, three favorite songs: Space Savior, which. Mm -hmm. Top five church song right yeah. there. I think it's great, and um, I actually hadn't heard the album when I saw them live, and uh, and that was one of the last songs in the set from I remember, and after the band was done, I went up to Marty as he was tearing down the, his gear, and I said, what was that song that you guys had just played? Um, with the uh, lyric of uh, My Little Panda, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said it was Space Savior. I said, that was incredible, and he said, yeah. 
Yeah, it is. <laughs> so I bought, uh, I bought it that night, and and uh, phenomenal. Anchorage, Operetta. Those are my other two. You were to say yeah. something about it. The Space Savior. Does that remind you of the Velvet Underground? It always, for me, because it, it, it has like a, almost it, a Mo Tucker sort of. Uh, well, slow down, start up, and, and all the heroin. Right. Yeah. <laughs> white light, white heat. Where the dun, yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, it's know, a it's a builder. That, yeah. And it's mm -hmm. uh, but I think the way he twists the lyrics each time, mm -hmm. I think it's just it's super clever and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that right. sound in live it was seriously goose bump oh, yeah, yeah. because it, it hit on all nerves yeah. and uh, just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant songwriting on that one. All right, so that was number eight. So here, have that back. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right, so we're on to number seven. You ready? Yes. Here we go. Okay. Hologram. Hologram. Oh, wow, <laughs> number seven for you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, go ahead. I love this album. Um, you know, there was there was kind of a dark period there in the '90s where everyone thought the band was falling apart. And uh, although I loved Magician Among the Spirits, I understood why people were a little distraught. Um, and then this was just uh, you know, Peter was firmly back in the band, and you got the feeling that they're all in the room playing together, writing together again. Um, it seemed uh, very focused, but it was also very edgy. Um, Steve has described it as garagey, which I, I wouldn't go complete with that because I don't think a lot of garage bands have the vast array of you know echo boxes and things yeah. that that, uh, that they're using on this. But um, uh, yeah, it's a it's kind of a claustrophobic sounding record, but but in a um, it's an exciting claustrophobic. You know, claustrophobia. I don't know if this, if this makes sense, but uh, it almost brings a little back of the heyday sound. Yeah, but but uh, like grungy. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's really kind of the guitars sound kind of that shimmering sound mm -hmm. a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I just listened to that this morning, so it's really fresh, uh, fresh in my mind. But uh, it's great. Um, I love that little mask image right. there. It's great. So three songs. I have to um, think about this. Um, uh, I'm just going to pick the ones that pop into my head because I, I don't have the list here. Um, the, out of left field choice, This Is It, mm -hmm. uh, which I believe is about Michael Hutchinson's yep. uh, Untimely Demise. Right. A very eerie song. Um, uh, tranquility, beautiful. Uh, amazing yes. guitar sounds. Um, and uh, the first song, Anas Anesthesia. Anesthesia. Cool. Yeah. yeah, excellent choices. Um, yeah, so that was number seven for you. Mm -hmm. My number seven was the debut, which Robert discussed earlier, of Skins and Heart. Um, yeah, a different, a different, a different band, different sounding band, different vocal, definitely yeah. a different vocal presence for Steve. Uh, my three favorite tracks: the Unguarded Moment, which is just quintessential Church, just uh, one of their best songs, I think. Um, Bel Air, is this where you live? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I want for number th yeah. for my three songs. But I'll tell you, that was really hard. She never said is great. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, memories and futures. You know, it's it's, a great it, it's so hard to pick three yeah. songs, but you know, you got to go at the end of the day the ones that kind of hit you the most at that moment in time. Mm -hmm. Just like these choices, I think if we did this in a year, we might uh, shuffle things around a little bit. Right. All right. So we're on to number uh, number six. Mm -hmm. You got yours ready? I do. All right. Here we go. Okay. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So we got Heyday over there and we got The Blurred Crusade. Mm. Um, I'll start this one off. Uh, this was the church's second album. Uh, this came out in 1982. Kind of a still of a similar sound to Of Skins and Heart, but maybe a bit more... I think this is the first vocal performance of Marty, right? Yeah. On yeah. Uh, uh, Field, Field of Mars. Of Mar on yeah. Field of Mars. Mm -hmm. um, the album, I'll tell you, it still freaks me out to this day when you when I'm listening to it and I got my cat sitting around relaxed and there's that knock on the door right <laughs> when he's recording the guitar parts yeah. and it's so jarring when you're listening to it. If you're not familiar with the album, uh, you'll have you'd have to experience that. Mm -hmm. But uh, almost with you, incredible, incredible song with that descending G chord uh, riff, just just incredible. Uh, you Took, which is another song that they performed on that 2009 tour when I saw them. I think it was maybe even their closing track, if I remember. Uh, really extended version, great. And the song An Interlude, which uh, they may even have done that on that tour yeah. as well. So 
that's my three picks for Blair Crusade. I need to say something about almost with you. Go ahead, real quick. So, and this is an apology to everyone that that read uh, No Certainty Attached and may have taken issue with what oh. I said in the book. So, I don't know. Okay, in the book, I like slagged that song off. I said it was church by numbers. I don't know what you said. I, it, it's been five years since I read it. So. I, don't, I don't know what I'm thinking. I, it is absolutely shocking. The only thing I can think is maybe I was sick of it at that point. But, uh, and, and I was saying to you earlier before we started taping that there were sections of that book that were written in my 20s when I thought I knew everything, and I'm 40 now, and so I can look back on my 20-something self and say, you know, you were full of it. <laughs> but I'm, I'm very proud of the book, but I just say that particular section, I would rewrite it if I, if I did that now. That is a wonderful song. Uh, addition to that'll be uh, that'll be altered, huh? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, your number six pick there. Yeah. So uh, hey Day, very appropriately named. Album very surprising. Because... I just want to say that this is number six. But go ahead. Okay. So so um, uh, this really was the heyday of of the church. But interestingly, a little history here is that the um, the title was actually meant ironically because. In Australia, a lot of the uh, Australian press were kept saying that they were past their prime uh, at this before this album came out, that they were a spent force, and so they thought, well, let's just call it Heyday, you know, just kind of as a joke. Right. And then it was kind of their their second real big success in Australia. Um, it's just uh, just a beautifully produced record, um, exquisite guitar work, harmonies, melodies. Um, Three tracks, Tristess, got to be one of my favorite church songs ever. Uh, Happy Hunting Ground, a beautiful instrumental with, with orchestration. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Roman um, oh, is, is a very great rocking closer of the album. The reason this isn't like in the top three for me is that um, there are a couple spots on the B side where it, it, it's just not as strong, I think, as, as, as things start out. Right. Um, but it still is, is a wonderful album. Interesting. All right, that was number six. On to, no, all right, we're top five. Yes, okay. All right. Here we go, number five. Yeah. All right, so I'm holding up Remote Luxury, which was, I think, number, was it 15 or 14 for you? It was definitely down at the, the bottom tail end of the list. I mean, it was it, it wasn't that far down. But it wasn't, it was, okay. but it was in the second it. half. Okay, bottom half. Uh, remote luxury, and and he has untitled number twenty three. Why don't you start this one? Uh, you know, when this came out, there was there was a couple months there where I felt that this was the greatest album the church had ever made. Uh, and then uh, after a while, I I, I had to kind of look at it in perspective of of all the great albums they've done. It's still for me very high up there. Um, and um, I, I do want to point out that the. Um, the record and the CD are, are a bit different. There's more songs on the vinyl version. Uh, when I say that it's it's one of my favorites, um, I am uh, I'm really talking about the CD version and the sequence there because it's just a very tight album. Um, beautiful songwriting. Um, I, you know, I echo what you said about it. Um, the only possible drawback with it is that it is um, very kind of slow moving throughout. I mean, there's there's not any real upbeat songs, mm -hmm. except possibly Space Savior, which is still a slow tempo, but it, it has a, a you know real build to it. Um, so you have to kind of be in that mood. If you're wanting something that's a little more raucous, uh, you may not connect with it. Um, in terms of um, three songs, Operetta, Great. beautiful, one of maybe their best album closer ever. Um, Space Savior and uh, really love Pangea. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Operetta, you just made me uh, remember when I saw the, the church in 2009 when they were playing Operetta. I just have vision of Steve <laughs> little uh -huh. pirouettes across right, the right. stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Uh, we got a little friend with yeah, us so too. This is Lynx. Um, That's a good so, cat. Yeah, he's he's here to join us. All right, so that was number five for Robert. Number five for me was Remote Luxury, uh, the EP that we discussed uh, mm -hmm. that we're acknowledging as an album because it does have uh, 10 songs on it. Um, combines Persia and the Remote Luxury EP. I'm not gonna say any anything more about it other than 
A Month of Sundays, which for me is another one of my favorite church songs. Uh, um, and they did do that on that same show that I saw them live. Uh, phenomenal song. No Explanation, I think, is a great one. And Shadow Cabinet. Mm. You know, but there's, mm -hmm. this This is a, it's a, there's lots of gems on this oh, yeah. one. And uh, what's your opinion on, um, we have to mention it, Maybe These Boys? Uh, I Honestly, I like Maybe These Boys. Yeah. Um, and that's another one. It's just reviled by the uh, songwriters themselves. And I had to just kind of get past that. Maybe these boys, um, you know, when I first heard the album and, and I didn't realize the song was hated, I, I would put it on mixes that I would make because I really liked it. I love the uh, kind of dual guitar attack that's going on with that song. So, you know, it's not one of their greatest songs, but I think it's got it's, a little slinky little groove. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to number four. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Ah, no, interesting. Now, uh, before we filmed, Robert and I both discussed um, our first experience with the church because we're, I think, exactly the same age. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, you know, like many people of our generation, our first exposure to the church was hearing Under the Milky Way on the radio in 1988. I mean, I was, I was telling Robert, I specifically remember my mom driving me to school it was it was either ninth or tenth grade and i remember that song being on the radio and just being intrigued by the timbre of the vocal yeah. and just the spaciness you know no pun intended there of, of the song in general um that's my first exposure with the church right there is is starfish mm -hmm. um yeah take it away okay so my again my head and my <clears throat> heart are at, at war on this one because my heart wants this to just be number one mm -hmm. um I just I, I love it and and when I got it uh, I had the cassette initially and I just played that thing down to the threads of the tape. Um, so my heart, it, 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 in some ways, in my heart, this is my favorite church album. My head says it's it's not the greatest, but it's definitely in the top. You know? you, um, if I remember correctly, in your book, uh, you t discuss about you actually going to purchase. Was it this album? Mm -hmm. I, I I think I did. Yeah, uh, there's some with the replacements in the church going mm -hmm. to a mall to buy. Mm -hmm. Right, so mm -hmm. there's a great story uh, in in Robert's book, so right. you'll have to check that out. Yeah. So just just to play devil's advocate on this, mm -hmm. what make what not what doesn't make? Why is this not the the best church album? What you were saying? Because um, it in some ways maybe plays a little safe for them you know i mean we've uh, we've now had this um, 30 plus years of material to enjoy from this band and we've seen how far they can stretch it and uh, starfish is very much a direct hit on the kind of pop rock nerve center uh, amazing lyrics tight musicianship uh, incredible guitar work um, and, and with Hotel Womb, I think you, you, you get a little bit more of the expansive right. um, church sound. But, um, but it doesn't give you a full taste of, of what they're capable of. And so, and so that's really the reason why I don't put it at number one. But, uh, but I do absolutely yeah. love it with all, all my heart. Um, so Great babes. Obviously under the Milky Way. Um, Let's I, do it this way. Mm -hmm. Three favorite songs besides Under the Milky Way. Okay, sure, sure. That's uh, how I approach mine. Uh, Lost, a beautiful mm. ballad, um, some of my favorite guitar work ever. Um, Antenna, which is uh, one that I've come to like as, as I've gotten older. I, I didn't initially love it you know, mm. when I was a teenager, but uh, now I think it's a great, uh, kind of so somewhat angry, almost Bob Dylan-ish song. Um, Thousand was a thousand tons wagging in your ear tonight you know it's about gossip it seems to be um, uh, and reptile uh, you know what, what a song yeah I had this yeah. cranked right before mm -hmm. I came yeah what what a song what a bass line mm -hmm. that's reptile uh, is is kind of the quintessential church song because each person in the band is, is doing something entirely different but it's all in the same key so the bass line is doing its own thing, oh, yeah. the two guitar parts are totally different, and the vocal line is a totally different melody, but... And then they coalesce for that chorus. It's it's a tricky yeah. one, it's very polyrhythmic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that bass line. I'm, I'm a bass player and I sing when I play bass, but that's a tricky one right there, Reptile yeah. with what's going on, and that was mm -hmm. a great a little 
bit of information you gave because of how different each section is and how they create come together to create just brilliance what a what a song reptile mm -hmm. all right so interesting that's number four for robert number four for me uh was seance from 1983 we already discussed it i mean you have to bring up that snare drum sound when you when you discuss seance but it's it's a dark album i mean a beautiful beautiful album cover um this is and it comes in various colors this is the purple i think this is the yeah this is the australian pressing um and i believe that is Steve Kilby on the cover. Really? Yeah, I don't know about that. I could be wrong. Yeah. Well, <laughs> someone's going to let us know in the yeah, comments. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, one day, my number one on that mm -hmm. one, Electric Lash and Fly, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, the opening track. Yeah. Um, great. It's, it's just got this, like, this album has just got this airiness. In contrast with that really mechanical drum sound, it's got this psychedelic goth feel to the album which is mm -hmm. I mean talking about album covers this is just such a perfect cover for the music contained within it's very cloudy and and mysterious mm -hmm. uh, so that's it number four for me seance top three this is where it gets even more exciting now I had a really hard time with these top three yeah. because in some ways they number one I think has always been number one for me, but two and three have been a little bit interchangeable, and I actually switch places. And now I'm like, as I'm doing this, I'm almost thinking mm -hmm. I'm switching them back, sure. but I'm just gonna go with it. Right. Um, so number three, you ready? I am ready. Here we go. Yeah. We have the same. Oh, do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this morning, this was number two for me, but I revisited another one that's uh, coming out. If you guys keep in track, you probably know what's not been shown by the two of us. <laughs> so Priest equals Aura yeah. from 1992. It's mm -hmm. a long album. It definitely capitalizes on the length of the compact disc yes. format. <laughs> but I'll tell you, um, I've grown to love this album more and more as the mm -hmm. years go on. It doesn't have those immediate accessible songs like, you know, Under the Milky Way, Metropolis, or some of those other ones that preceded, that immediately preceded this one. But what an album. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you, uh, you talk. For years, I said that this was the best church album. Mm -hmm. um, because in many ways mm -hmm. it may be the most fully realized um, yeah, I mean, it is a vision that has been distilled seemingly perfectly onto an album. Um, it's been bumped down a little bit, I, I think, again, because it's, it's one facet of the church. So whereas, it's kind of the opposite of Starfish. So whereas Starfish was the accessible pop rock uh, aspect of the church, um, Priest Equals Or is the experimental, expansive side of the church, but, but very well honed. Yeah. Um, so it's not kind of bloated like Magician oh, of yeah. the Spirit. It's, 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 it's polished, but yeah. not in the polished, sheeny sense. It's mm -hmm. very put together and very hard hitting. Mm -hmm. I, I used to, um, you know, I used to play this for, for people all the time. I've always been very evangelical about the church to, uh, to an annoying degree with people, um, particularly when I was younger. And uh, this one, I, I, people just did not understand my obsession with this. Like, not a casual church fan album. No, no. And, and, but I, I swear, I, I lived inside this album for years. And I would listen to this when I went to bed, and I would just <laughs> drift into, into that world. Um, so picking songs from this is, is tricky, but... Um, <clears throat> um, Paradox, um, you know, I came to realize later that's about drug addiction, pretty dark song, um, but uh, but strangely very beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Feel is like kind of the one sort of pop song yeah. on, on the album, and, and, and it almost has kind of a, uh, um, what was that band um, from Manchester, the Stone Roses, it almost has a Stone Roses kind of beat to it, mm. you know, that sort of baggy. Yeah. Mm hmm and um, and okay I'm gonna split the third between two so okay. so the disillusionist amazing epic uh, dark uh, surreal narrative that oh. seems to be sort of about Steve Kilby or his dark half uh, but then also witch hunt very curious little uh, a bit of, of very um, 
black um, humor. Ripple I went with, Feel, mm -hmm. and I went with The Disillusionist as well. I right. call that one like the pirate song. Yeah. <laughs> that just backing vocal part that, that chimes in uh, is just incredible. It's really clever. And um, I just love this, the sound of this album because, you know, the, the Starfish and uh, Gold Afternoon Fix were a bit more produced. Uh, this album just, I think, had a lot more of a, maybe a natural sound to it. Mm -hmm. um, and another great, I wish I had this one on vinyl, right. the artwork for this one is just incredible. We should mention the drummer on this album, it's uh, J.D. Dotty, I think is how Patty you Smith? say his last name. Is it Patty Smith? Yeah, uh, he was in the Patty Smith group and, and uh, replaced Richard Plug uh, on the Gold Afternoon Fix tour, and this is the only actual album he's on. Uh, it's a shame that he didn't do more work with him. Uh, from what I understand, he not only played drums on this, but also played some bass and, and was very, uh, very heavily involved in the Did song you line. talk to him for your book? I don't remember. I, I didn't manage to talk to him, okay. unfortunately. All right, so we uh, joined in, joined together yes. on our number three there. Okay, so that's two. <laughs> All right, what do you, after everything now this, I wow. I knew you would be shocked. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And um, I got heyday over here. So let's go. Yeah. Why is after everything now this number two? It's just a, it's just a beautiful album. It's so, um, it's got so many layers to the, uh, to the guitar work, the vocals. Um, I, the, the, the lyrics to me are very, seem very heartfelt, uh, very spiritual. And it's interesting because I, you know, I talked to Steve about this when I was working on the book, and he seemed very detached from it. So it's, I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but uh, uh, the song "After Everything," mm -hmm. um, a very uh, vivid narrative about someone kind of at the end of their life, um, looking back on things, and, and it deals with regrets and things like that. Would you say it's kind of that song is is kind of autobiographical? I know it, it, you get the feeling it's someone talking about almost their musical career. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it has to come yeah. from a personal place. Um, you know, he's projecting himself into into a character that's maybe older, but but yeah, it it it, it feels um, it feels like it wasn't just an exercise. Right. Um, uh, I'm gonna go over three with this. Um, the awful ache, uh, another um, uh, kind of spiritual one. There's there's almost like some. Some Christian mysticism yeah. running through this, which, which again, I talked to him about this, and he, he was a little bit uh, baffled, and I had to explain the lines, and he said, "Oh, yeah, I guess that is." <laughs> um, uh, song for the asking is is not a masterpiece lyrically, but it's a um, it, it has a lot of um, a lot of ache to it. it mm -hmm. It's a very romantic song, and, and has a, a almost a little bit of desperation in it, um, and so so. Beneath the lyrics, the, the feeling really gets me. And then, uh, kind of a somewhat obscure track, Night Friends, I think is just, mm -hmm. a, just a very interesting, um, layered and uh, musically unusual song. And the beautiful piano work, which I think was David Lane did the piano stuff on this album, uh, which was a nice touch. Very nice. That was number uh, two for uh, for Robert. Number two for me. This was uh, number six for you, I believe. So this was Heyday, 1986 album. Um, this morning, this was number three, and Priest equals Aura I had at number two. But revisiting this today, uh, just something about the guitar presence of this one. And you know, I know I um, uh, thrown this out there a couple times, but um, bands that aren't known for making instrumental music. I mean, uh, the instrumentation on, in, the, in the church is very significant because a lot of songs does have, do have a lot of open space and expansion, but they're not generally a band that does instrumentals. Mm -hmm. And uh, Happy Hunting Ground is, you know, if I had to compile a list of bands that typically, you know, non-prog rock bands right, right. that don't typically make instrumental music, uh, that would be one of the top songs just how it starts, it almost has an A and a B section with that little tom drum thing, and the orchestration, when that orchestration part climaxes, mm -hmm. it is uh, mind-blowing, yes. and uh, it's, it's just beautiful. Already Yesterday is I, another one of the church's best mm -hmm. songs, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and Tantalized, mm -hmm. just a great song, kicks off a side two, just a 
Uh, seeing that live also is another great right. experience. <laughs> We're on to number one. You yes. can see what my number one is okay. and uh, I, I see what your number one is right. here. So here we go. This is where it all ends. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I went with, uh, with Starfish mm -hmm. 1988. You went with uh, the second album, Blurred Crusade. Yes. So why is Blurred Cru the Blurred Crusade number one? Blurred Crusade, uh, because this is the album that sums up the church in all of their aspects, I believe. Um, now I will say, uh, Steve's singing on this is not the best singing he's ever done. You know, I, I often wonder uh, if there was some way to take his voice from now or even from the Starfish era and, and put it into these songs. Boy, it would really be uh, even more stunning than it is. It's not bad, it's just that you know, you hear it, and it's a little shocking if you're used to listening to the later stuff and you go back and listen to it because he hadn't quite um, figured out his, his voice, really. Um, but, the, the, okay, so to get back to what I was talking about with the, the reason for the selection, um, you have the um, pop craftsmanship side of the church, so you've got Almost With You, uh, Just For You, you know. Um, uh, and Just For You is, is a great ballad, great love song, you know. Um, but then you also have the expansive, psychedelic, epic side, um, which would be represented by When You Were Mine and also You Took. Right. Uh, and uh, an interlude. And when You Were Mine, um, great. Another mm -hmm. great one. There's, there's just a lot of variety in tempo, dynamics, um, it's just, this is what this band can do all in one place. So that's that's the reason for it. I love every song on the album. Um, in addition to the ones I mentioned, um, I really really love uh, "To Be in Your Eyes," which is a great love song, great ballad, um, beautiful lyrics I think, and and uh, also one that I don't think they've ever played live. Um, I don't know why they don't like some of these pop battles that I love so much, but uh, maybe it'll come back on the next tour. Yeah, so so I can't pick three songs. I'll just, yeah, all right, song is great. Okay, so you know, some people will say, "How can you pick the most popular album as mm. your favorite one?" But I'll tell you, favorites are personal, as you can see. Robert and I, our lists are, are I mean, sometimes they meet up in similar spots, but you know drastically different at other times so your how you rate albums is all based on when you listen to them how you were feeling how the songs hit you emotionally everything about it and just sometimes they just hit you at the most perfect time sometimes you listen to it and just disregard it because it doesn't have any attachment to you at all but for me starfish is um, is just Excellent. Uh, mm -hmm. To pick to pick three favorite songs other than Under the Milky Way, I'm just going to go for it. Reptile, which we discussed mm -hmm. earlier, lyrically, musically, uh, uh, excellent. Destination, which starts the album off very dark and just how it, on it, it builds and it keeps dropping out. You have this little keyboard or the maybe it's a guitar volume swell that happens in there in between right, those. So my chords. third favorite pick I'm going to go with is North, South, East, and West, primarily because of that. Uh, besides being a great song. That little guitar part that uh, plays uh, this little guitar theme that plays throughout the song, uh, but you know, choosing three songs in this album, beginning to end, uh, it's my favorite church record. So that concludes our top fifteen uh, ranked church albums. Uh, I'd like to thank Robert for being here again. Be sure to check out the link below for uh, information on ordering his book, No Certainty Attached, and also to keep up on his upcoming publications. And uh, you wanted to close this up with a little message, right? Yes, absolutely. So uh, we wanted to wish Steve Kilby a very happy birthday. September 13th, right? Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Steve. Um, thanks again for watching, guys. And I just would also like to mention that um, obviously everyone out there is going to have a differing, different uh, viewpoint on their album. So um, instead of just saying, how could you pick that album as number 15, give us your own rank list in the bottom so you can see also how difficult it is to put something at the bottom of the list because it hurts a little bit to have to do that. <laughs> yes, whatever you choose as your favorite church album, you're right. You are correct. Yes. That and, is the best church album. Exactly, exactly. So, and I'm going to have a playlist for um, the three favorite tracks that I've uh, pulled off of each of the albums there, so be sure to check that out down uh, in the description box. 
All right, so thanks again, guys, for watching. Talk to you soon.